Hi, my name is Rebecca. I am a guide with the Parramatta Heritage and Visitor Information Centre. This is the story of William Hewitt Hart, who was born and lived most of his life in Parramatta, and who, in a manner of speaking, made quite an impact, not just in his local area, but across the world stage. William, more often known as Billy, was born in his family home in Darcy Street in 1885, right here, on what is now known as Parramatta Square. He was the third of 12 children, born to William Henry Hart and Maria Alice Hart, who were also born and bred in Parramatta. His grandfather had established the timber business Hart and Sons, which evolved into Hart, Hitchcock and Company. Billy had just a short walk to school at the wonderfully named Parramatta South Superior Public School. It still stands right here, surrounded by Parramatta's latest state-of-the-art public schools, functioning as their local history museum. This memento of Billy in the museum is an appropriate commemoration of the hands-on nature of his achievements. At 16 years of age, Billy began his dentistry training in Parramatta with Mr Maxwell. He completed the apprenticeship in 1906 and soon set up his first practice in West Wyalong in the Riverina area of New South Wales before moving to Newcastle and then Sydney. Like many young men of the time, he was attracted to the newfangled motor vehicles. He was one of the first people in Australia to own a motorbike and before long he owned not just a car but a car dealership in Market Street, Sydney. Soon his mechanical interest and aptitude was to take him, quite literally, to greater heights. In 1910, Harry Houdini had become the first man to make a powered flight in Australia, staying aloft for just one minute. When a year later, Joseph Hammond toured Australia as a demonstration pilot for the British and Colonial Aeroplane Company, Billy grabbed the opportunity to take a few lessons from Hammond's mechanic, Leslie MacDonald. He then purchased a Bristol box kite aircraft for the princely sum of £1,333, a conservative equivalent of $185,000 in today's money. Dentistry must have been a lucrative trade, even then. For his money, Billy gained the distinction of owning Australia's first aircraft. Sadly, the glory didn't last, as the aircraft was soon involved in a major accident, surprisingly while on the ground. A violent storm blew up, and with the aircraft being constructed of lightweight materials, it was picked up by the wind, blown over and badly damaged. Making use of both his mechanical aptitude and his father's timber yard, Billy completely rebuilt the plane right here using his father's timber. Not the last time he would construct a plane in the yard. Unfortunately, the rebuild took Billy a considerable amount of time with his flying instructor departing Sydney before it was completed. Undaunted and demonstrating the bravado that would become his trademark, he decided to teach himself and soon took his first solo flight around Penrith. On November 3rd, he set out from Penrith to Parramatta to have breakfast with his father, taking his brother Jack with him. Using the railway track as a navigational aid, he raced a train partway along the route, which must have come as a surprise to the morning commuters. He landed right here in Parramatta Park, not far from the Hart family home. Billy wrote, on planing down, we struck almost a gale. The machine rocked so violently that we didn't quite know what was going to happen or how or where we were going to land. However, we managed to land safely, much to our surprise. This journey was the first cross-country flight recorded in New South Wales aviation history. Later that month, Billy passed a series of tests 
devised by the newly established Australian Aerial League to become Australia's first licensed pilot. Two days later, he flew solo from Penrith to the Royal Agricultural Society showground in Sydney in 55 minutes, which was the longest recorded flight in Australia at the time. In December, he took his sister Cassie aloft, and so a Parramatta lady became the first woman to take to the air in New South Wales. Parramatta was proud of its famous aviator. On an evening in February 1912, an event was held here at the amphitheatre in Parramatta Park, where thousands of people gave Billy an enthusiastic reception. And he was also awarded a purse of sovereigns by Parramatta Mayor Walter Jago, along with an artistically illuminated certificate of appreciation. But it wasn't all smooth sailing, and 1912 proved to be a tougher year for the young adventurer. His run of bad luck began in January, when another violent wind, this time while Billy was in the air, forced Hart to quickly find a safe landing place. He chose the railway line near Rudy Hill, but clipped a signal post, damaging the plane, though fortunately not seriously harming himself or his passenger. In a stroke of luck, no trains were involved either. The event did, however, give Billy the dubious honour of being the first man to crash a plane in Australia. Billy was second to none when it came to self-promotion. Unsurprisingly, he was the first Australian aviator to take a cameraman aboard with him, who made Australia's first three aerial documentaries. You have often heard the saying, pigs might fly, Billy told a reporter at one stage. Well, to show that pigs can fly, I took one up with me the other day. This perhaps overly blasé attitude soon found him in court, where he was found guilty of having made a great noise and disturbance, therewith frightening, disturbing and stampeding a herd of dairy cows. He was forced to settle with the farmer. The cattle paddock at Parramatta Park was the scene of a further triumph when Hart defeated the American aviator Wizard Stone to win the inaugural and prestigious Air Championship of Australia. Perhaps Stone should have used some of his wizardly magic because in the first of three proposed races, he got lost in a storm, ceding the race, the series, and the prize money of 250 pounds to his rival Hart. As for Billy, sweeping in on a splendid curve, the great aeroplane entered the back domain of Parramatta Park at its northern end and slanting slightly eastward as gracefully and lightly as some giant bird came to rest. Hart being quite the entrepreneur established Hart's Aviation Company in 1912 and in August he completed the construction of a two-seater monoplane in which he successfully made 27 flights. Just a month later when the engine stopped at 200 feet he crashed the plane near his new base at Richmond where the RAAF base now stands. He wrecked the plane and nearly killed himself sustaining head injuries that put him in a coma for six weeks. Keeping a promise to his mother, Billy remained earthbound until after her death. However, he hadn't given up on aviation. When World War I broke out, he enlisted as a lieutenant in the number one flying squadron. He served in Egypt and Britain as a flying instructor, training the world's first generation of fighter pilots. In 1916, he was diagnosed with epilepsy perhaps resulting from his earlier head injuries, and was medically discharged, bringing his military service to an end. His interest in aviation, however, never waned, when aviator Bert Hinkler became the first person to fly from Britain to Australia in 1928, Billy brought him to Parramatta, and Billy was also a friend of Charles Kingsford Smith. With flight no longer an option, Billy returned to dentistry where he was also an innovator. He soon owned a string of surgeries, including one here in Wentworth Street, where he also resided for a time. In the 1930s, he visited Britain and America to observe the latest developments in dentistry, introducing new technologies to Australia, including the use of gas for pain management. Showing his usual gung-ho spirit, he publicly extracted his sister's front teeth to demonstrate the effectiveness of nitrous oxide to a fellow dentist. Esma's reaction to this is not recorded. In 1929, Billy finally settled down and he married Thelma Cook. They had a son, William Hart IV. 
The marriage was tragically cut short when Billy died of a heart attack in 1943 at just 56 years of age. He was cremated at Rookwood Cemetery with his ashes being scattered over his parents' grave while the Air Force flew a salute overhead. The Air Force Association in its minutes recorded that he was a respectful, courageous pioneer, soldier, airman, loyal friend and good citizen, lovable personality and gallant gentleman. This memorial to William Hewitt Hart was unveiled in Parramatta Park in 1963, commemorating an enterprising pioneer of Australian aviation.